Welcome to the China Briefing. The content of the briefing includes China's over 35s hit age barriers in tough labor market. North Korea doesn't want reunification or war. Chinese scientists clone first rhesus monkey to survive into adulthood. China hopes for dragon babies as population decline gathers pace. China, Philippines agree to manage conflicts in South China Sea. China's over 35s hit age barriers in tough labor market. Nikkei Asia. Workers in their 30s in China are facing increased risk of termination and struggling to find new jobs as the effects of the country's flagging economy on employment deepen. Many companies are cutting labor costs by laying off workers in their 30s and 40s and replacing them with younger workers who can be paid less. This is leading to job insecurity and dampening household sentiment, with the Consumer Confidence Index showing no signs of improvement. The situation is causing concern in China, where employment is a key factor in maintaining social stability. North Korea doesn't want reunification or war. Bloomberg North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has announced that his country will cease any efforts at reconciliation with South Korea. He has abolished various government organs that were responsible for managing relations with the South, and will curtail national economic cooperation, dialogue, negotiations, and exchanges focused on peaceful reunification. Kim has also called for the removal of words like fellow countrymen and reconciliation from official documents. This sudden shift in policy is believed to be due to North Korea's increasing cooperation with Russia and China, who are supporting Kim's regime. Chinese scientists clone first rhesus monkey to survive into adulthood. South China Morning Post Chinese scientists have successfully cloned a rhesus monkey using a modified version of the conventional somatic cell nuclear transfer, SCNT, technique. The monkey, known as Retro, is the first of its species to be successfully cloned and the second primate species ever to be cloned. The researchers believe that cloning could produce a large number of genetically uniform monkeys to be used in drug efficacy tests. The cloning technique could also have applications in human-assisted reproduction, though the low efficiency of the process currently rules out human cloning. China hopes for dragon babies as population decline gathers pace. Financial Times China's population fell for the second year in a row in 2023, with deaths exceeding births by 2 million, according to official data. The country recorded 11 million deaths against 9 million births, down from 9.6 million in 2022. The falling birth rate, aging population, and economic uncertainty have posed a challenge to Beijing as it grapples with a property downturn, weak exports and low investor confidence. Experts have warned that China needs to revive growth factors to avoid a debt deflation spiral. China, Philippines agree to manage conflicts in South China Sea. Nikkei Asia. China and the Philippines have agreed to improve maritime communication and manage conflicts and differences through friendly talks in relation to issues around the South China Sea. The two countries have had several confrontations in disputed waters in the South China Sea, with both accusing the other of provoking conflict. China claims sovereignty over almost the entire South China Sea, including parts of the exclusive economic zones of Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam. Both countries have agreed that maintaining communication and dialogue is essential for maintaining maritime peace and stability. U.S. lawmakers criticize lifting of sanctions to gain China's help on fentanyl. South China Morning Post Republican lawmakers have criticized the Biden administration's approach to stopping the flow of fentanyl from China to the U.S., accusing it of diplomacy from a position of weakness. The criticism came after U.S. State and Commerce Department officials admitted that lifting sanctions on a division of China's Ministry of Public Security was a trade-off aimed at securing Beijing's cooperation on fentanyl. China, India, and Mexico are the world's largest producers of fentanyl, a synthetic substance 50 times stronger than heroin and one of the main causes of America's opioid epidemic. Chinese plastic makers bets on cheap U.S. gas foiled by disruptions at Panama and Suez. Bloomberg. 
China's petrochemical sector is facing challenges as twin choke points for shipping disrupt trade flows and drive up costs. The expansion of capacity in the petrochemicals industry, which accelerated last year, has resulted in a glut of plastics across Asia. Many of the new plants use propane, which is mostly imported from the US. However, shipping crises in the Panama Canal and the Red Sea have raised freight costs and limited access to US supplies, forcing the scaling back of propane dehydrogenation, PDH, technology. The disruptions are expected to hit China's PDH sector and may result in margins remaining in break-even or loss-making territory for most of 2024. Macron calls for de-escalation in China-US tensions, backs to risking strategy. South China Morning Post French President Emmanuel Macron called for a de-escalation of tension between China and the United States during his speech at the World Economic Forum in Davos. He proposed a de-risking strategy for Europe's relationship with China, emphasizing the need for the European Union to reduce its dependence on major powers and avoid escalating geopolitical tensions. Macron stated that the EU should not be totally dependent on the US, but should instead have its own autonomy in dealing with other countries. He also announced domestic reform plans and suggested the creation of a joint debt eurobond for more European public investment. Macron stressed the importance of avoiding an escalation in tension between China and the US and called for more investment in future industries like artificial intelligence. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the six-dimensional world, here to bring you the latest news from our fascinating dimension. Today, we explored a range of topics, from labor market challenges in China to North Korea's shifting policies, and even the cloning of a rhesus monkey. Let's delve into these stories and share some insights. In China, workers in their 30s are facing a tough labor market, with increased risk of termination and difficulty finding new jobs. As companies cut costs, they are replacing older workers with younger ones who can be paid less. This situation not only creates job insecurity but also dampens household sentiment, which is not ideal for maintaining social stability. It's a challenging situation for the Chinese economy, and finding a balance between cost-cutting and retaining experienced workers will be crucial. Moving to North Korea, we learned that Kim Jong-un has decided to halt any efforts at reconciliation with South Korea. This unexpected shift in policy is believed to be influenced by North Korea's growing cooperation with Russia and China, who are supporting Kim's regime. It's a clear indication that North Korea is prioritizing these alliances over reunification or peaceful dialogue with South Korea. This development adds another layer of complexity to the already delicate situation on the Korean peninsula. Now, let's talk about the groundbreaking achievement in cloning. Chinese scientists have successfully cloned a rhesus monkey using a modified version of the conventional somatic cell nuclear transfer technique. This breakthrough has significant implications for drug efficacy testing and potentially even human-assisted reproduction. However, the low efficiency of the cloning process currently rules out human cloning. So, don't worry, we won't be seeing any cloned humans walking around just yet. Shifting gears to demographics, China is facing a decline in population for the second consecutive year. The falling birth rate, aging population, an economic uncertainty posed challenges for Beijing as it deals with a property downturn, weak exports, and low investor confidence. Reviving growth factors will be crucial to avoid a debt deflation spiral. Perhaps we'll see some creative initiatives to encourage population growth, like the recent Dragon Baby campaign. Who knows, maybe the year of the dragon will bring a baby boom. Moving on to international relations, China and the Philippines have agreed to improve maritime communication and manage conflicts in the South China Sea. Both countries have had confrontations in these disputed waters, and maintaining dialogue is essential for maritime peace and stability. With China claiming sovereignty over most of the South China Sea, tensions in the region continue to be a cause for concern. Let's hope that diplomacy prevails and these conflicts can be managed peacefully. On the topic of the US-China relationship, US lawmakers have criticized the Biden administration's approach to stopping the flow of fentanyl from China. 
While the lifting of sanctions on China's Ministry of Public Security was seen as a trade-off to secure Beijing's cooperation, some argue that it was diplomacy from a position of weakness. Fentanyl, a synthetic substance linked to America's opioid epidemic, is primarily produced by China, India, and Mexico. Finding effective ways to address this issue without compromising diplomatic relations will be a delicate balancing act. Lastly, let's discuss China's petrochemical sector, which is facing challenges due to disruptions in shipping. With a surplus of plastics across Asia, many new plants in China rely on imported propane from the US. However, shipping crises in the Panama Canal and the Red Sea have driven up costs and limited access to supplies. This is forcing the scaling back of propane dehydrogenation technology, which may result in margins remaining in breakeven or loss-making territory. It's a reminder of the interconnectedness of global trade and the vulnerabilities it can expose. That wraps up today's news, my fellow observers. I hope you enjoyed our journey through these diverse stories. Now, it's your turn to share your thoughts. What do you make of the labor market challenges in China? How do you see the future of the US-China relationship? Join the discussion and let's explore these topics together. Until next time, stay curious and keep observing. Note, the content and views expressed in this article are solely those of the original authors and do not necessarily represent the views of OpenAI. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.